All right, we're gonna perform an alternator output test on this cat skid steer. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the cover so we can gain access to the alternator on the back side so we can get a hold of the output cable. We're gonna put a load on the battery using the carbon pile. So now that the cover is off, we can see the alternator behind. And the terminal we're actually looking for is going to be the big red cable that's coming off the alternator. So let's grab the tooling and let's see if we can get this set up before we get the engine running. We're going to need a carbon pile. So we're going to grab that and we're going to gain access to the battery terminals back here. So we got to lift up the rubber boot. It's always a good time to just inspect your battery while you're at it. Of course, if you're having a cranking system problem, a charging system problem, uh, commonly you'll find a corroded connection or a dirty connection that you're gonna have to deal with. Whenever you're hooking up your carbon pile, it's gonna be good to make sure you back off that carbon pile. So turn this knob all the way counterclockwise and that's gonna make sure we're putting no load on. We can verify that we don't have any load on because the gauge for the current is reading zero. What we can also read here is that our voltage, our OCV voltage of this battery on this analog gauge is showing somewhere around 13. These are never the most accurate gauges, uh, but we can see that an open circuit voltage of a battery would be about 12.7. So within reason, that gauge is looking not too bad. Uh, because we don't trust analog gauges on carbon piles though, we are gonna go ahead and grab our multimeter do our best to click that in somewhere where we're gonna be able to see it. Grab our test leads. These ones have our alligator clips already on them. So that's handy enough. One twist this so we can deal with one at a time. And just go ahead, turn your multimeter on to volts. Uh, we are gonna to wanna to read volts DC and we are going to clip that onto our positive lead and we're going to reach back and we're going to clip this one onto our negative and you'll know you got mission success if your multimeter reads the voltage okay so what we're going to do is now that we've installed our multimeter onto our battery we've installed our carbon pile onto our battery it's now time to install the amp clamp onto the output terminals of the alternator for us to do that, we have to put the amp clamp, because this is a multimeter amp clamp, we have to put the amp clamp in the 400 amp range and we're going to peak hold. So what that means is that the highest amperage reading we're going to get from the output of the alternator will be saved and will show on the display. We can hook the, the amp clamp on and we can leave it in here. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna leave it in there. We're gonna run the engine. So now that we've started up the engine, we ran it up to speed, we checked the voltage output of the alternator, we put a 500 amp load on the battery, now it's time to reach up and grab our amp clamp. Alright, so our amp clamp here reads 98.2 amps. So that is the output of this alternator. At that point, we would check against the manufacturer's specifications of the alternator, and we would be able to verify whether the alternator is producing the required amount of current. Now. We know we put a demand of 500 amps on the system and the alternator's job is to both meet the needs of the vehicle as well as replenish the battery. So the minute we put a 500 amp load on the battery, we requested through the voltage regulator that the alternator produce a full field current output. So if it was rated for 500 amps, it would have tried to produce 500 amps. But because this alternator is not rated for 500 amps, what we see is that it's only able to produce 98.2 amps. All I had to do was quickly grab the model number off of the alternator. So this one was a Denso 32B68 alternator. And really quickly, we can be able to just Google it and come up with the numbers here. It shows on Amazon we could buy one for 
uh, whatever dollars, but it's a 90 amp alternator. Rare Electrical lists the same alternator for a 90 amp rating. And so what we can see is that our 98 amp output of our alternator is producing better than the specifications. So if our spec was meant to be 90 amps and we're producing 98.2, clearly the alternator is producing everything it's supposed to be doing and it's good to stay in, in operation.